Okay, so uh, today we're going to jump into the basics of windows and doors. Um, we're basically just going to get into loading various window and door types, uh, placing them within hosts, and then using the, the temporary dimensions to kind of get them in place and where we want them to be. Um, getting into window properties and door properties and things like that will be uh, episode two of Windows and Doors. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, uh, look for that episode. But if you're just getting into how windows and doors work, um, this will be a, a quick introduction to that. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to, I've basically created a, a little box here. It's fairly small, um, just out of some basic generic walls um, to give us just a little, a little space to work with uh, to create, put some like a door and a window in here to mess with. So I'm going to come up to door once I click that, you'll see it automatically defaults to a single flush 36 inch by 84 inch door. If I hit my pull down, I can see there's already preloaded a whole bunch of different options in here. Um, 7 foot and 6 8 doors of 36, 34, um, 30 inch options, and then one 7 foot by 32 inch option. Why they don't give an 80 inch option for 32 inch, I'm not sure. Um, but so let's say you don't want a single flush door. Uh, it's a pretty plain and generic door. Maybe you want something with some panels or maybe some glass or something like that. Um, so once we have our door selected, we're going to go up here to load family. And we can, yours will show up something like this. You have US Imperial Library. Uh, this is the default Revit library. Uh, and within that is a folder called doors. So if we open that up, um, you can see if I just click once on one of these, it'll show a little preview over there. So I've got double curtain wall doors. I've got a double flush door. So the double version of kind of what I've already got loaded in. Um, double acting doors, double glass sliding, just a random opening, uh, garage door, two different types of garage doors there. Um, and then this is the one that we currently have loaded in there, the door single panel. These are all kind of your generics. Um, and then you can get into a little bit um, different stuff if you go into the residential. Uh, they have side lights and glass doors and that sort of thing. So um, let's say we just grab a single two panel wood door here. And when I click that, it's going to ask, okay, we have all of these options within the single two panel door. Do you, what do you want to load in here? I would not recommend loading them all in. Uh, that just bogs your file down and will slow you down in the long run. And odds are you have a fairly standard door size that you're going to use, um, at least height wise. Uh, so maybe all of your doors are six eighths. Um, you're probably not going to need a one foot by six eight door. Uh, so I usually say, okay, I'm going to do the three foot, the two six, and we'll say the two four and the two eight. Two ten is kind of a little bit different size. Um, but if you want to load that one in there, we'll load that one in there too. But anything under that, if I get into a condition where I need those, I can always make those, like create those out of, out of what I've got um, and go from there. But there's no reason for me to all of a sudden, you know, jump in and grab all of this sort of stuff as well. So I'll hit OK. <coughs> and so now I've loaded in, and if I hit the drop down, I have the single flush that were in here before, as well as my single two panel wood doors, um, as well as the sizes that I've, that I've got. So let's say I want a 36 by 80 inch door. So I've got that selected, and as I hover over a wall, you can see it starts to show a preview of how that door is going to look in the wall. So it's got the jam, it's got a little bit of a trim detail on the outside there, um, and then it shows the door and the door swing. So I can flip back and forth as I move my cursor across the center of the wall which way that door is going to swing, whether it's in or out. So let's say I wanted this door to swing in, and I'm going to place it off to the side here, and I click and it places it in the door. So now I can cancel out of my door tool here and now that I have this door in here maybe maybe I decide that I don't want it to swing in I am actually want it to swing out or I misclicked or any of the above. So 
if I click on my door, I've got these toggle arrows. And if I click this back and forth, I can flip the swing back and forth this direction. I can also flip it back and forth this direction. So um, those are kind of a quick and easy way to kind of flip a door around and get it positioned where you want it to be. Um, so that's a quick way of, of kind of placing the door where you want it to be. Um, and then let's say I want to make sure that it sits six inches off of the edge of the wall here. From the edge of the wall to, say, my jam, I want, I want to actually set that dimension. So I have these temporary uh, dimension strings down here. You'll see they go away when I click off of the door, but when I pull them up, um, it gives me a couple dimensions. Um, depending on the walls around, sometimes it'll jump to the closest wall, sometimes it'll jump to a one a little bit further away. Um, but either way, you can click and drag the ends of these to other walls. Let's say there was another wall out here. I can click and drag that and select another wall if that's the one that I want to kind of pull off of. Um, so let's say, you know, this wall extends down here and then there was another wall that was out this direction. Maybe when I, when I select this, maybe I don't care about this wall, but I do care about it coming off of this one. I can always grab that wall as well. Um, what you'll notice is that this is actually coming from the center line of these walls. Uh, most of the time you're probably not dimensioning your doors off of the center line of a wall. So if I click, if I just click real quick on this little tab, it'll jump it back and forth. So if I click it again, it'll go to the other side of the wall, it'll go back to the middle, and then it'll go to the inside again. So I can flip the where these toggles go to just by kind of clicking that little dot there. Um, and that can be helpful just to kind of get a point of reference um, that you're looking for to actually input your the dimension that you want. So right now it says it's 1 foot 11 to the center of this door. Rather than doing the math on saying, okay, I've got a 36 inch door, I've got 18 inches, and then I want 6 inches there, so I need 24 inches from there to the center. I can actually do the same thing as I did on the wall with the door. So I can click this and flip it back and forth from the different sides of the door. And you'll see this is actually aligning with the inside point of my jam there. If for whatever reason I want it to be to, you know, the, the kind of open side of the jam rather than the stud side, I can click this and then drag it and actually place it on the inside there. So now it's five inches. If I flip it to the other side, now it's four inches. Um, but then I can come here and click that dimension and say, okay, I want it to be six, and it'll move that, that door where I want it to be. So these temporary dimensions are incredibly useful, and you'll use them all the time to just kind of get, get things into the place of where you want them to be. Um, so that's just a, a real quick placing of doors and, um, and kind of moving them around. Windows are very similar. So if I come up here and hit window, I've got my, my fixed window in here. There's also some others loaded in here, a double casement, um, a double or a double hung window there. Um, I can do the same thing as I did with doors. I can go to load family um, and I'm still in the doors uh, folder there. But if I scroll all the way down here, I can get to windows and I can see all sorts of different um, different uh, windows in here. Skylights, I will tell you skylights uh, can only be placed on roofs. So if I wanted, if for whatever reason I wanted to put this type of window on the wall, it's not going to work. Um, I'd have to create something that actually is hosted by the wall. These can only be hosted by roofs. Um, so if I scroll down here, I can find all sorts of stuff with, uh, you know, transoms and and everything else. So maybe I'll do a a triple with a transom on the top. I'll hit open and just like the doors, I've got all these options for you know what sizes I want and all that. So I'll say I want the five foot one by five foot. Say okay. And it's gonna load that in. And then you'll see this change. And now when I place this I can kind of place it um, in the wall here. <clears throat> so similarly to the the door, I can flip this back and forth with this little control toggle here. Um, so if for whatever reason I placed it on the wrong side or I, I just need to flip it, I can flip that back and forth this 
um, this way. If for whatever reason I have, I click on the window and you'll see none of my temporary dimensions are showing up. If I click here, I get these temporary dimensions. I want temporary dimensions for this. How, why aren't they showing up? Right up here, if they don't show up, you can hit activate and they will appear. If you still do not get them, um, you can kind of create your own. You can go up and, uh, and actually create dimensions that you want and say, okay, I want to go there to there to there. And then when you click on the window itself um, and hit activate dimensions, it'll activate those two, the dimension string that you just created and you can punch in you know, whatever you want it to be. And then once you have it in place, you can always come in and delete that dimension line um, now that you've got it kind of where you want it. So that's a quick little overview of, of doors and windows and placing them in, in their hosts and then kind of getting them in the place of where you want them horizontally. Um, as far as vertically and offsets and sill heights and things like that, we'll get into that in episode two with properties.